This is Sherry Boshert reporting for the Global Medical News Network. At the annual meeting of the American Surgical Association, I interviewed Dr. Kelly Hunt, Chief of the Surgical Breast Section at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Dr. Hunt presented a study that looked at the results of sentinel lymph node dissection in patients with breast cancer performed either before or after chemotherapy. Dr. Hunt, why did you do this study? Well, the main impetus to look at our patient population at MD Anderson was the fact that neoadjuvant chemotherapy is being utilized with increasing frequency in operable breast cancer patients, and even those who present with clinically node negative disease. And surgeons have been sort of struggling with the question as to whether or not they should do the sentinel lymph node biopsy before the chemotherapy or after the chemotherapy. And in our experience at MD Anderson, we've had very good results with the accuracy of sentinel lymph node surgery after chemotherapy. So we wanted to compare the rates of uh, identification, false negative rates, and also look at local regional failures to see if there were any differences in the two groups of patients. And how did you do the study to compare? Well, we took, uh, we queried our surgical breast oncology database that has about 5,000 patients who've had sentinel lymph node surgery within it, and we, pick, we chose the patients who had clinically negative lymph nodes at presentation, and we defined that as patients who had both a negative axillary exam, physical examination and also a negative axilla based on ultrasound examination. So all patients who were clinically node negative were examined for clinical pathologic factors and we separated them into two groups, those who went to surgery first and those who had chemotherapy first. And what did your results show? So what we found was that overall the identification rates were extremely high. In the whole group it was 98.5% of the time that the surgeon could identify the sentinel node. And then when we looked at surgery first versus chemotherapy first, the identification rates were approximately the same. So in this surgery first group, we had a slightly higher rate. It was almost 99% identification rate. But in the chemotherapy first group, it was 97.4%. So it was approaching that, that uh, very high rate of identification. So overall, it was very successful that the surgeon could identify a sentinel node. The next key thing was, was there any difference in false negative rates between the two groups? and we did not find a difference. We found the false negative rate in the surgery first group was about 4%, and it was um, about just over 5% in the patients who had chemotherapy first. We also mentioned that it reduced the number of axillary dissections. Talk right. about that some. Right, so when we looked at the two groups overall, there was no difference in the number of axillary dissections performed. And that was a little bit surprising to us since, of course, I mentioned that the chemotherapy first group had more T2 and T3 tumors. So what we did was we looked at the patients by their presenting T stage, and we found that there were fewer positive nodes in the chemotherapy first group in the T2 and T3 patient populations, reflecting the downstaging that we see with chemotherapy and that's been reported in, in many of the neoadjuvant chemotherapy trials. And so that resulted in fewer axillary lymph node dissections being performed in the chemotherapy first group, despite the fact that those patients presented with larger tumors. Overall, we were happy to see that the local regional failure rates were the same within both groups. They were, it was very, very low rates of either local recurrence or regional axillary or supraclavicular nodal failures in both groups. There were no statistically significant differences between the two groups. So that was reassuring that even though we were seeing, you know, numbers of, uh, smaller numbers of positive nodes, it wasn't resulting in a higher rate of axillary recurrences. And we did have a 55-month median follow-up in the patients who had neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Reporting for the Global Medical News Network, I'm Sherry Bosher.